Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the Messages service that's built into macOS Server. Now, Messages across Apple devices uh, usually includes not only a chat service, but also texting. And so that's kind of what Messages is synonymous with. And so one of the things I want to point out here with macOS Server, uh, just to start, is that the Messages service is not a replacement for texting. So this won't be your own texting service. Instead, it will be a chat service that you would use, uh, whether it's peer-to-peer -peer or group chat. Uh, that's what you're setting up here. Now, the benefit of doing this is it is a private messaging service. So what that means is that it's on your server and you're controlling the flow and what gets sent and what gets recorded and all of that stuff so that it's not in the cloud anywhere. It's just on your server itself. Uh, you can do this inside or outside your network, depending on whether or not you open the right ports and have your server accessible uh, remotely. Uh, but again, it just is a convenient uh, service that you might want to use if you're working with kids and you don't want your kids' messages to show up anywhere. You can create this private messaging service that you can use either inside your network or both in and outside your network. So let's go ahead and take a look at the service. Again, you can see it's off right now. Uh, again, just like with all of our services, we have our firewall settings right here. If I edit permissions, I can choose to limit it to only some users and only some networks or all networks. In this case, I'm just going to leave it on the default settings here. And then I've got these two options here. I can set up Federation. And let me just uh, click on that and say Edit. And this is Server-to-Server -server Federation, which allows, um, this allows users from the server to communicate with users on other servers. So if you want to allow access to people who are on other servers, uh, MSN or one of those types of things, you can allow this uh, communication and then you can see allow federation with any domain or you can restrict it to certain domains that you would put in there and you would type in whatever domain you wanted. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to allow it. And you could require server-to-server -server federation, uh, which is just, uh, again, authentication to make sure that everything is secure. So you can do it that way. I'm going to cancel to leave it at the default, but you can enable that service there. The other thing is archiving. You can archive all of your messages if you want to do that so that there is a record of them. And if I just click on this Show in Finder, what it's going to do is show me where those message archives are located. And you can see that it's in the uh, Library, Server Folder, Messages, Data, and then Message Archives. And that's where it will archive all of the different messages that I uh, use through the server so that I have a, a record of them if I want to keep it that way. And that's pretty much it in terms of setting up the uh, actual uh, server itself. So let's go ahead and throw the switch to start the messages server. And you can see it's available on my local network, and that's because I haven't opened the ports. If you do want to use this remotely, you can open the ports on your router, and I'll put those ports up there on the screen for you so that you can see them. And once you've opened those ports, you're good to go. If you've got an Apple router, Apple will automatically open those ports for you. Uh, but if you've got a different router, then you'll need to open the ports yourself. So now that I've got that set up and ready to go, let me show you what it looks like to set it up on a client machine. Okay, now here we are over on a screen share with my MacBook Pro. And so let's go ahead and walk through the setup here. I'm going to go into System Preferences. And once we're inside System Preferences, we're going to go over to Internet Accounts. And on Internet Accounts, we're just going to hit this uh, down here. We're going to say Add Other Account. And when we come into that, we're going to add this macOS server account. Now, I've done this before, but you can see here we've got our server right there. I'm just going to say next on this, and I need to put my username and password in. So let me do that right now. Okay, now that I've got that going, I just click on sign in. And what it'll do is it'll show me the services that I've got available that I want to add to this account. So right now, I just have the messages checked there. We're going to say done, and it's going to go ahead and ask us to uh, put our password in again. So let me do that. And that's for the local account. We're going to say OK because it's going to make a change there. And it says all network activity filtered through this. We're going to allow the configuration. And so there we go. Now we've got our account. We've got messages set up. It's already been added to the messages application. So let me go ahead and close this. And you can see here I've got uh, the little messages window up because I already have messages running. So let me just pull up the messages window. And we're just going to kind of do this and move this over here. And so here we've got the messages window set up. So now it shows my Jabber account right here, shows that I'm offline. 
and I can go ahead and say available and it's going to go ahead and connect and so now I'm available right it shows that I've got this account it's all set and ready to go and so right now it shows that I'm offline and all that now what would happen is if I have my buddies in there uh, any buddies that I've added on Mac OS server would show up here and I'd be able to connect with those buddies in fact, what I'm going to do is let me go over to my the server uh, screen and let me show you how to do that. Okay, here I am back over on the server. And so you can see I've got John Doe here and myself. What I'm going to do is just go into groups. We're going to go ahead and go into this work group. And you see it's got uh, John Doe right there. And, and you notice here I've got this make group members messages buddies. Okay, so that that way we become buddies. So what I'm going to do is let me add myself on here. And so there I am. So I'm going to put myself in there as well so that I'm there. Uh, you can even give the group a shared folder if you wanted to. But for right now, this is all we want to do is make them buddies. And I'm going to say OK. And so now it's going to add that so that now we have in this work group, we've got both of us right there. I'm going to say OK. So now that I've got that set up, let's go ahead and go back over to uh, the screen share that I've got. And let's take a look at how this works. Okay, so here I am back over on my screen share. Now, one of the things that I've seen with some of the errors uh, on the Internet and all that is that the buddies don't always get added automatically like they're supposed to. I think there's a little bit of a bug in uh, the version that I'm looking at, and so uh, it's not showing them added here. And you can see with, uh, with the buddies information, I don't see my guy here. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and add uh, the person manually and just show you what it looks like to do that. So I just hit the plus here. I'm going to go ahead and add a buddy. And so I'm just going to add the account name, which would be John D. And I can add him to whatever group I want. I've got one group there, family. I'm just going to put him down his full name, just like that. Or if I wanted to, I could find him in my address book, Okay, doing it this way. If I wanted to do that in terms of my directory services, I could, I could find the person in there. And I'll go ahead and say Add. And you'll see it says offline, and you see it says waiting for authorization. Uh, what's going to happen is John is going to get an invite that says, hey, do you want to join our group? And John then has to respond to that authorization by logging into his account uh, and making that work. You can see there it says waiting for authorization. Once that happens, then John will be added to the group that I set him up on, and then when he comes online or offline, it'll show in here. Like I said, for some reason, there's a bug in getting that to add. Uh, I know other users have had that issue. I haven't found a fix yet, but I'll keep looking, and if I find one, I'll definitely do a screencast to uh, show you what that looks like and how to fix it. So that gives you an idea of how the uh, messages service works in Mac OS Server. And again, it's a, it's a good service to have, especially if you just want your own private chat server. Uh, if you're in a business and you just want to have that in-house, you can do that. Or if you've got a family, you want to get your kids used to using something like this but have it completely protected, you could just limit it to your local network and then chat back and forth, and it'll give them a good idea on how to use those message services. And it would allow you then to message them when they're on their machines or whatever you got going on in the house. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.